Uh, councillors, members of the public, I'd just like to uh, start with having reverence for his prayers. And we're all fully aware of the uh, recent loss uh, the council of the borough has had with the loss of um, Councillor Brian Juice. And I'd also like to mention the loss of um, Councillor Leslie Street from Wellington. So I'd like to ask if we could have a minute silence for both those councillors. Thank you very much. Uh, members, before we move on to um, the minutes of the, the last council meeting, I'd just like to remind members that um, filming and photography and recording has been permitted um, for the first time. Okay. And we, I'd like to welcome um, Mr. Bennett. And I believe we're being live streamed this evening, so I hope everybody's um, got their best faces on. Um, like more night, I believe, is the uh, website. Is that correct? Yes, I've got that right. Splendid, splendid. Right, okay. Moving on, item number one, ladies and gentlemen. Um, minutes of the council. And that's members to confirm the minutes of the previous meeting. Moved. Moved. Seconded. All in favour? Thank you. Move on to item two, apologies for absence. Apologies from Councillor Austin on a six month leave of absence and Councillor Malcolm Smith, unless there are any further apologies from the board. No further apologies. Thank you very much. Item uh, number three, uh, declarations of interest, please. Declaration from uh, Councillor Dugmore, uh, I can item eight, the specific environment report uh, being put in that school. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, item four, please report and announce. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as you already mentioned, uh, uh, the very sad passing of our colleague in Brown News. Uh, Brown was elected to the Wadah in uh, 2011, but I knew him well uh, years before uh, on the Great Boy Parish Council, and we worked together there, and he was the chair there. Uh, Brown was a very warm, supportive, and dedicated man who did his best for uh, his community. He was a very uh, quiet, unassuming English gentleman, and we were all missing very much, and our thoughts are with his family. Just before Christmas, Mr. Mayor, we moved from civic offices. Uh, this was a, a very big job completed without much disruption. So well done to all those uh, involved in that task. Overall, our uh, council accommodation plan will see Tuttle Region Council operate far more efficiently and save two billion pounds a year. Money that can now help protect services for vulnerable children and uh, adults. We kept our prompt pledge to the people, no new council offices. I'm delighted to hear that Iron Bridge Court World Heritage Site was voted a number one World Heritage Site in UK and the second most highly recommended site in the world by International Travellers website. God help us to bring more than 20 million, 20 million into the borough each year from the visitors and this is real credit in our camp. So this is uh, a really good, good news indeed. Uh, at the beginning of January, we launched our budget proposal 
and Bill McLaren sitting next to me will be saying a lot more about it uh, uh, later on. Our budget proposal are absolutely clear in our goals as a business winning council attracting, attracting new jobs, promoting growth, uh, while doing all we can to protect the services. To do this, we also demand a fair dealing from the government. Grant damping and population undercount alone this year will lose the council something like 3.6 million pounds, money that should have come to us, the council. I'm getting in touch with the government minister to make case for a fair deal for Talbot as strongly as possible. Over the next few months, uh, Mr. Mayor, we will also be carrying out the difficult task of advising thousands of people about government cuts to their benefits. Many of these people are hard-working families on low income who from April will see cut in the government housing benefit, the so-called bedroom tax. And the grant we receive to support council benefit is being cut by the government by 10%. Make no mistake, this will hit many people very hard. We will provide the support we can but these cuts, which will hit some of the most vulnerable in our community, will no doubt increase demand for our services at a time when we can least afford this. As you can see outside there and feel, we are in the grip of a bit of a, a mini winter, a mini cold. I'd like to pay tribute to the work of our gripping team and also the work of our neighborhood snowboarders. The, new, the snow warden scheme is another example of a cooperative working where the council and the community come together to find new solutions. We have recruited something like 50 volunteers who work with their local community to uh, treat areas uh, that are not on our normal gritting network. So well done to uh, gritting family, uh, uh, the workers and also uh, the snow wardens and so on. I'm very proud that in December I signed the Borough uh, Armed Forces Community Covenant and uh, you know, and armed forces have a long, played a long important history in the lifeblood of our borough and it's only right that we uh, recognize this. Finally, in the last 30 seconds or 40 seconds, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to talk briefly about the new port. There has been a very small number of people speaking very loudly criticized the council and our approach to development in council in Newport. We have even been called a rogue authority and council that is out of control. Until now, I have tried to keep quiet as there has been an independent process in place and I thought it was important that I as a leader showed respect for that independent process. The process looked at whether the council land at the, the station road should be designated as a green area or not. Mr. Mayor, the independent inspector has now reported and supported council's position that there was no case for this land to be registered as a village green. I only have another 20 seconds, thanks very much. Independent inspector's recommend, recommendation were last night endorsed by the council's independent licensing committee. In independent inspector's report, she described some of the evidence given by those supporting the village green as, I quote, exaggeration and inconsistent, and unquote. She even described one person as, I quote, embroidering his evidence as he went along to the point of implausibility, unquote. Mr. Mayor, this council has shown to have acted reasonably, rationally, and honestly true to the value. As a responsible council during these austere times, this council has a duty to maximize our asset for the benefit of all our residents. And I'm delighted that the council's position and our action have been completely validated and vindicated by the independent inspector. Like all our uh, market town, Temporal Region Council wants to see a prosperous and thriving Newport, and that's what we are striving for. Thank you very much. Thank you, Edith. Moving on to uh, the Mayor's Statements. Obviously, I refer you to pages 9 to 13, Appendix B. Massive list of 
had the massive fortune of eating loads of great people across the borough over Christmas. And as you could probably see, I've put on a few pounds, I do apologise. The chair will hold me, undoubtedly. Um, tomorrow, on a more sober note, uh, Holocaust Memorial Day, um, we have um, the honour of receiving a Mrs. Webber. She was travelling up from London, who is a, a survivor of the Holocaust. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Mrs. Webber for, for joining us, and she'll be speaking to some of the children of the borough in, in, at the Place Theatre tomorrow. Hopefully, a lot of the members can join us there, our members of the public. Um, the Park Run will be taking place on the 16th of February. I'm sure all the members have um, enlisted in the run. I doubt that um, very much. I know I haven't. I should do, really, shouldn't I? Um, yeah. yeah, quite good. <laughs> And on another fitness stroke, we've got From Here to Maternity, which is in connection with raising money for the children's ward. It's a walk on the 2nd of May from Shrewsbury Hospital to Telford Hospital, and hopefully we can get quite a few people involved in that. Uh, thank you very much. Is that being done over a succession of days? No, 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 it will be done over the same day. It's not that much, not that big walk. Sorry, correction, sorry, the um, Holocaust event will be at Eaton Point House. I said it was going to be here, sorry. Right, moving on swiftly. Public questions, I believe. Uh, non, non received. Non received, splendid. No, non received from the public. Okay, point number seven. Cabinet decisions made since the last council meeting. To invite cabinet members if they wish. Mr. Speaker, I support the report against myself, so uh, I'll take questions on what they go through the budget. Uh, the biggest one is the budget proposals, uh, monitoring between car parking and council priorities. Thank you, Councillor Panels. Question, yes. Councillor Fletcher. Thank you for your question. Would it come in like to answer that? I'll inform this to me. I didn't quite hear what the question was, but the parents in the room is good. Sorry, I should have said at the beginning, may, may I ask there are microphones being uh, on people's tables. Can I ask the microphone to be passed to um, Councillor Fletcher? There are some mobile ones about. Hello. Um, may I ask, what provision has the council put in place for the young people aged between 18 and 25 years who, one, are homeless, and especially if they need, us two, if they need a loan to put down for accommodation? Thank you, Councillor Fletcher. And any crisis loans that any of them might need at any time? Thank you. Well, um, regrettably, um, speaking in regards to the crisis loans, the government have abolished um, crisis loans. The Department of Work and Pensions will not be um, allowing for crisis loans, which is something that is deeply regrettable. And I hope Councillor Fletcher agrees with me on, on that point. In terms of the crisis network, something Councillor Elliott is um, leading on from the council point of view. Um, I'm sure that he can expand on any of the points I'm about to make. But the issues around homelessness and post bonds are something that is an existing um, council policy. Um, the crisis network is around um, food banks. Um, and additional support for those in I'm sure that uh, if there's any um, further any further from Councillor Elliott, he will be more than happy to uh, respond. Thank you. Councillor Dugmore, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. My question is regarding employees' car parking arrangements. Those employees working at the town centre have little choice but to take a pay cut by purchasing the car park whereas those employees who work in other parts of the forest do not. What arrangements are they to compensate those employees who will be disadvantaged by these arrangements? And how does this support the fairness element of the cooperative council state? I think you'll some, some uh, employees may not be paid, some not, that's what you're saying. Yes. I mean, clearly our policy is that, um, to try and provide car parking spaces at uh, the uh, um, Addenbrook and uh, Derby House. 
and clearly in these difficult times we have no choice but uh, to try to recover the cost from the employees and it will be uh, those who work in those offices who will be paid. It's a consequence of <coughs> employees at the moment uh, and I think we're fairly close to coming forward with the final details of that. But if there people, for instance, Wellington don't have to pay charges in the moment. Um, you know, that's regrettable. Um, it would have been worse if we had gone to the new city office, but it wouldn't be any space and the cost would have been higher. So we're working very hard at keeping the individual cost as low as possible. Oh, so was extra cost? Oh, no. no. Councillor Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've got a question for Bill, really, and it's to the next one, and even the council to get around Newport centres around uh, that issue with the, what's reported as the £21 million pounds capital receipt, which is again included within the budget. Now, I, I'm rather surprised at what the leader of the council said about this, particularly the council, uh, through a Freedom of Information Act, has uh, admitted that it's likely and could well spend up to £1.5 million pounds at this very difficult time fighting its own local community. And also fighting other planning applications um, that uh, are competing with the council's own reports, which, uh, rather than promoting business, has actually tried to stifle uh, competition around the Newport area. And we'll give Newport no good whatsoever. Now, what I want to know is, is why isn't this 21 million identified as a significant risk in the budget? Because it is a significant risk. There's every chance that the legal actions that the council is fighting at huge cost to the taxpayer. Well, actually, rebound them. Okay, so what other question is? Well, I did. Is why is it identified as a significant risk? And what I would also like to ask a question about this is if or when this action by the council fails and is landed by a huge bill of one and a half million, will those responsible for making that decision uh, do the honourable thing and resign? Uh, I, I want to debate on. I want to debate on with you, Councillor uh, uh, Clearly, uh, it's normal practice, which you did for four years in, in part, to uh, put forward a balancing uh, a capital receipts plan, uh, which you know we inherited, we added to, and carrying on. So uh, yes, there are capital receipts in the plan, which you know are in the report individually. They're not identified. The figure you quoted by the report was confidential, and sadly somebody leaked it. Uh, you know. You know, which you know, when there were capital receipts in the reports uh, regarding uh, the city office were never leaked. Wonder why? Uh, so yes, uh, there's capital receipts. There are risks. There are risks in almost everything we do. And why should we uh, say that particular capital receipts at greater risk than any other? It's only because you have your biased views about it. Uh, as far as we're concerned, we're doing the right thing with the best advice we can, and we have to fight for the people, all the people. And the amount of money that we may take is, you know, a small proportion of the benefit to the people of Telford. So I'm not ashamed of the decision at all. Councillor Fletcher. The uh, Cabinet uh, meeting of the 8th of November, item 2.1.6, talks about approval to acquire a site in Prize for a new secondary school. Could the appropriate Cabinet member advise me who has that site of acquisition gone forward and can he actually tell us where the site is? Thank you. Thank you, like I say, we're still in negotiation uh, on that side, so it's, uh, it's important that we don't uh, uh, say anything more about that as uh, Councillor Fletcher knows. I will, as soon as I can, inform all, uh, all members of uh, uh, the acquisition of that site. Councillor Carson. Thank you. Before I talk about what I'm going to ask a question, Councillor Reid's already asked, but there's still something I'd like to know, and this is. Uh, addressing the leader and also uh, Councillor McLean, because the leader did state quite recently when he said there was a small number of people. My question was, was he at that meeting that I was at, alongside several hundred people on a number of occasions? So they're not small numbers. It, it needs to be a question reference, Councillor Payton. 
It's not arising from the cabinet member papers, I'm afraid. There's no other questions. We're moving on to point number eight. Uh, recommendations from cabinet. 10th of January 2013. Financial Market Council Bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this report in Appendix D, pages 9, 10, and 20, gives a summary of new capital allocations, environments, and slippages. I um, move the recommendations from page 20. To take any questions? Second. Questions? Candidates? Um, thank you, Speaker. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity to give a paper on environment and capital spending to draw attention to uh, bank discourse stabilisation, which is mentioned there. I'm very pleased to note that the Southern Region Council has made capital provision in excess of £5 million for the next few years for priority stabilisation work in fact it was a time when Unprecedented, and I think something unnecessary government cuts to bring all our budgets under uh, pressure. So, uh, on behalf of the residents and businesses in Jacksonville, I'd, I'd like to express my personal gratitude and congratulations to the Bank and the Cabinet uh, for this. I think uh, the, the, re the recent rock fall and the closure of Jimmy's Bank shows that the geological facts of life in the gorge are uh, still continuing to operate. And uh, obviously more work and more funding is going to be required in the future to ensure the integrity and, and the safety of the, of the World Heritage Site, which is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, because it's the second most popular in the world. Um, so, this is, <coughs> this guy, I just hope that all members, uh, in all parties, uh, would recognise that this is a continuing priority for the health and region. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Firms would like to respond? Does there seem to be any other questions? Oh, it's Councillor. Yeah, I've got a question along the same lines. So, Councillor Davis, I'd like to congratulate the government on the 12 million pounds they've put into that as well. Mm -hmm. Can I point out, we'd like to do it. I'd like to congratulate us for the work that we do with Eric Pickles and walking in the round of something. I'm sure it was a very short walk. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see any further questions. Uh, Councillor back to respond. Okay. I just want to thank him. I just want to share the He's in the last few years. Uh, you know, where the point is it? Uh, he sent us uh, and all councils 50 points on how to save costs. And uh, a week later, it came out in an order that uh, his uh, complimentary visiting budget was overspent by £10,000 in the year. So I thought I'd give it a rich point to me. So, this is by the time. I moved the recommendation. I seconded by Councillor Overton, was that correct? Yeah, it's, just, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favour? Against? Okay. Abstentions. <laughs> Moving on to point nine, uh, setting of the council tax base. I'd like to ask the council friends again, please. Going to sit down, <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker, this is a tactical report. It's a duty that we have to do each year. Uh, I think this year members should know the changes to the council tax base due to the impact of council tax support scheme, including amendments to exemptions, premium, and discounts. So it's a bit more tactical and more complicated issue because of the what I would say botched uh, scheme for replacing pension tax benefits. So I'd like to move the recommendation page 23. Uh, no second. Uh, no second. Questions? There are no questions. I'll move to a vote. All in favour? Against? Abstentions? Moved. Point number 10. Minutes of the board and committees are for noting. 
from members? Any questions? <coughs> Move them. The second one. Yeah. All in favour? Move. Move on to point number eleven. Questions. A question from Councillor Ian Westcott to cabinet members. That's it. I believe the leader of the council will be answering the question. Question number one. Thank you very much, Councillor Fletcher. Thank you, uh, thank you, Ian. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the question is basically, uh, you know, about the factory, uh, effective, moni effective monitoring and the process and so on. So I could sit down and just say yes, the effective monitoring is there, and for all the commercial contracts and. Uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, I'm confident the council are using the correct and robust contract procedure to carry out uh, the effective bond monitoring. And uh, unless, of course, the council Fletcher knows something else, which I can sort of, uh, uh, you know, you pick it up somewhere, uh, which I can sort of look at it again. The answer to this uh, alarm question is, which is quite good actually. Uh, uh, effective monitoring. Yes, we are carrying out a very effective uh, monitoring and uh, we do our best. Uh, unless you know something else, let me know and we will look at that one as well. Thank you. Thank you. Would Councillor Fletcher like a supplementary question? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm pleased to report that the, um, the leader thinks there is effective monitoring. Um, I have concerns about the officer's workload as there seem to be frequent requests from uh, residents about things that aren't working and the contractors are supposed to put them right and they don't seem to. I mean there's a, a light in my law which was reported on the 19th of December sorry, sorry 31st of November and it took until the Can't so the have a question please? Yeah. So, can I ask how effective it is, and is it the actual monitoring also monitored? Thank you. Is the monitoring monitored? <laughs> well, we do monitor the monitor. Uh, you know, the monitoring as well. And I'm, you know, I'm sorry to hear. Uh, you know, but yes, the officers do work hard. They do have their, uh, you know, workload increased in the last. Uh, uh, three, four years because of the, the cuts, because they are doing a lot more than they used to. And uh, I'm sorry that in his ward, uh, you know, he took the lights, uh, you know, a month over uh, and, and so it should be done. But uh, I'm sure that if you report it in the future, and we will take care of that one life as well. And, uh, and you know, we're doing our best here, uh, and we are effective. Thank you very much. I'm glad the point of monitoring the monitoring has been answered. Thank you, Ian. Uh, question number two, please. Question number two, please. Councillor Hilton Rose. Right, thank you, uh, Councillor Fletcher, for this question. Um, but I'd like to inform you that the council only received information relating to accidents involving personal injuries. And I can confirm that there has been no such incidents reported on the Hollyhead Road in connection with Wixes and Albury, which has been in place now since 2011. Thank you, Councillor. Would Councillor like a supplementary question? Um, I would be concerned that you only get where there's personal injury reports because there have been a number of near misses on that junction. I myself have had three where people have come out of Aldi's and nearly ran into us. And I would wonder whether our safety partnership should be actually doing a more intensive monitoring. Is that possible? May I get you like monitoring of near accidents? Yes. Would you think Kevin remember my time for that one? If she pulls herself together? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I use Aldi's quite a lot. And I go in and out of that access. Uh, but I must say that sometimes it's the drivers who are the problem there. But um, 
Um, so, but that is what all the information that we get. We do not get on flight to accidents or whatever. It's an ask to have actually a personal injury. Thank you. Good point has been raised. Who monitors the monitoring in their accidents? I'd like to look into that one, please. <laughs> well, moving on to um, question number three, please. Please, Councillor Steve Bentley. Yeah, move on, yeah. yeah. Number three, please. And could I just note that the name's spelled with a PH. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's Councillor Charles Smith. <coughs> uh, it's an odd question, this one, because the rule says the question should be asked right, on any matter in relation to which the council has powers or duties or affects the borough. And here I am being asked to confirm uh, that I commit to the council's core values and briefly explain what those values are. What those values are. Well, I would. I do conform to the property values and do believe in them. Um, but I proceed the brief answer because the property values have full a lot a long page. So as I see it, it's to be as open as possible about decisions, giving reasons for the decisions and actions, but without disclosing exempt or confidential information. And if operate fully with any scrutiny. Would Kent have like a supplementary question? Uh, yes, please, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, and I'm glad Charlie understands it. Because I was trying to in December, he took a, a document through Cabinet uh, on the statement of community involvement. Now, I understand there was a consultation period on that, and I just wonder if he thinks it's acceptable to take a document through Cabinet that only has 36 responses in a community of what we've got. 150,000? How many well, this is the old chestnut, isn't it? You know, you put papers out for consultation, you have to take account of some of the replies back and get there, and we know how many people live in the borough, we know how many firms are in the borough. <laughs> if you only get 36 responses, you've got to face your paper on those responses, and also take account of the people who have not responded to the wider public fair, the large silent majority. That's how I took it through, and I have no problem taking it through, and the other paper we've got, I'll shape your places, is now out for the consultation and it's halfway through the consultation period. Thank you. Can I ask another question? No, unfortunately they're all taken. Sorry. Never mind. <laughs> Questions are finished. Ladies and gentlemen, notices of motion, and I believe there's none received. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call close the meeting. Thank you very much. <laughs> Did you not have a copy of that? That's all right. I thought you went over there, so I... Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. There you go.